Well, hello there to everyone, except for people who say, educate yourself. <laughs> Welcome to Makeup and Movies, your favorite series on the internet that you never know when is coming, which is my bad, but you know I, who I am as a person, I just... That's just the way it is. Today's episode, I'm really happy to be doing, finally. This is highly requested, and I actually took the notes over this for the first time in December. And here we finally are reviewing today the tragedy that's not actually a tragedy. Raise your voice. Um, the 2004 American teen musical drama starring Hilary Duff, the guy from My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and Three Days Grace. <laughs> Somehow I had gone all 31 years of life uh, without seeing this until I saw this clip floating around Twitter or maybe TikTok, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> So I retweeted it, said, what is this movie? You guys all responded and said, raise your voice, please do it. And ever since that tweet, I've been mentally preparing to make fun of this. So friends, prepare to feel nothing. <laughs> Literally no emotion. And let's jump right in to raise your voice. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Today we are going to be using none other than the Lizzie McGuire makeup collection from ColourPop. What better time? Actually, <laughs> the Lizzie McGuire movie review would have been a better time. But still, I'm also gonna be prepping my skin with literally 80 products. Literally 80. <laughs> all right, so movie opens with a quote from none other than Beethoven. So we know this movie is gonna be really deep. Opening scene is a very joyful Hilary Duff singing in choir practice. Everybody is very joyful. This kid's super intense. The conductor's very intense. It's all just intense. They cheer for themselves afterwards. <laughs> And it's just, it's our first glimpse into Hilary Duff's character, Terry, and her love for music. Call me a dork, but I love choir practice. So after choir practice, our main character, Terry, played by Hilary Duff, obviously, is walking in the hallway with her friend and we meet the intense kid, Matthew, who never comes back, but he's fun. <laughs> So it appears that Matthew has sold her some concert tickets to Three Days Grace. And then we also get blessed with this awkwardness. She's gonna spend the whole next month hoping he didn't just get you pregnant. What? I like the choice of background music here with the toms. Hoping he didn't just get you pregnant. So it turns out that this is like the last day of school. Everybody's cheering, they're graduating from Riverdale. Riverdale, seriously. Couldn't think of a different name. Um, and this part just killed me because the banner, the banner hanging up that's supposed to be there to like congratulate the graduating seniors says Riverdale proudly in quotation marks congratulates the seniors. Like why on earth would they have put that into quotation marks? That's just the staff straight up admitting that they have to say that they're proud, but that they're not actually proud. Yeah, congratulations seniors, we're really happy for you. We hope that you do well in life. This scene though is so fun and nostalgic. We get all kinds of early 2000s nostalgia. We got a boom box, we got a camcorder. Also, I didn't notice until the second time watching this that the title of the movie comes through in the song playing in the background. In that Nate. So anyway, it turns out that camcorder guy is actually Hillary's brother. I mean, Terry, Terry's brother. His name is Paul. He is a graduating senior and uh, he records his sister a lot on his camcorder, which if you read the reviews, a lot of people found pretty weird and creepy, but I did the same exact thing at that age. Hey, Edna. Hi, put your shoes on. <laughs> and since I did it, it's not weird. Plus, why would you not want him filming? You can obviously tell he gets great footage. Why the you lying. <laughs> so back at home, turns out it's Paul's graduation party. And as they're setting up for the graduation party, we find out that Terry's dad is kind of a buzzkill. Terry don't start. He's just, he's anti-fun, you know? Terry wants to go to this music program in LA. It's like this very prestigious, only the best of the best people get invited, you know, performing arts program. And he just like is absolutely not open to the idea at all. Come on, it's not just a music thing in LA. Dad, this is so important to me. That's it. You're not going. And you know, I understand being a little nervous about it because she's only 16 and he's a parent and all that, but he's not just not a fan of the idea, he's like unsupportive. Hey, wait a minute. 
Who does that sound like? I'm not gonna give you a big hug and I'm not gonna wish you luck. So Paul finally decides to show up late to his own graduation party and he's really excited to see his Aunt Nina. Hey, Aunt Nina! <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny when he is greeting his Aunt Nina. His mom like points to her <laughs> like, yeah, Aunt Nina's right there. There she is, <laughs> in case he didn't see her. And then right here is when I was suddenly struck with the realization that this kid's graduation party consisted of him, his parents, his sister, and his aunt. <laughs> That's weird to me. So the dad and Paul kind of get into a little bit of an argument about this whole situation with Terry wanting to go to this musical program thing. Paul thinks she should be able to go. He's like, dad, do you not think Terry's special? And the dad's like, no, obviously I think she's special, but she's 16 years old. You know, it's a little debate. The mom steps in. She's like, you guys, can you please not fight? And the debate persists to the point of Paul ending up getting grounded because once the dad tries to kind of move on from the conversation and change the subject, Paul like, yeah, well now this is it. And he like almost causes his dad to combust. My sister crowded, get in the house. Not very mature, Paul. I appreciate this family's dysfunction. It's very relatable. Here's the palette. I don't want to use any of these colors today. It doesn't match my aesthetic. What will I think I would also like to point out the fact that Paul is also tall and therefore we're gonna call him Tall Paul. So anyway, guys, if you haven't gathered this yet, Paul like cares a lot about his younger sister, which I have to say is a little bit weird for a teenage boy's character in a movie, but what do I know? Uh, and it gets even weirder because then it cuts to him recording Terry again, but this time she's singing a really, really good song. There's a light in me and it's shining bright. Mm. Look, a few people were upset with me in the Lizzie McGuire movie video I made where I said Hilary Duff wasn't a great singer and I apologize for wording on my part. What I mean when I say stuff like that is good, but not Mariah, Whitney, Celine, Tori, or Ariana. You know what I mean? And believe me, I too am not a great singer. If I change my mind. But the reason it strikes me so much about Hilary Duff is because her characters are often supposed to be these outstandingly good singers. And I don't know, I just I just think it's a little disproportionate. You can't tell me I'm completely wrong, okay, considering they have to bring in a different vocalist for Hilary Duff to lip sync to when she sings in her movies. You know, I know in the Lizzie McGuire movie they used her sister. I'm not sure if that's who they used in this movie, but either way, it's just a little striking to me and it's not completely clear as to why they didn't just hire an actress who could hit the notes correctly, you know? It's kind Kind of like when I said that Honey had average dance moves. If the character is supposed to be the best choreographer in the city, why not cast an actual dancer? Does that make sense? I'm rambling. So anywho, Tall Paul is making this music video for his little sister's song. And right here at this angle with his bowl cut pushed out of the way, I was like, wait a minute, I've seen him before. I'm pretty sure this guy was in the movie Swim Van. Right. I'm ready. He was. <gasps> that movie's on the list too. We should do that next. Anyway, again, he's making this terrible music video. Terry sings in two different voices. The music fills the space and it takes the pain away. Did, did they think we wouldn't notice? The space and it takes the pain Nobody's gonna buy that you just sing with two different tones, okay? <laughs> Unless you're Jewel. Poverty stole your golden shoes. But it did not steal after. Anyway, this just gets <laughs> more and more awkward. Paul's editing the video, like, biting his lip. Mm -hmm. And you know, with all this sibling bonding going on, I'm just starting to get the feeling that something bad's gonna happen. Spoiler alert, it is. So Paul burns his homemade video of Terry onto a disc and drops it in the mail. So basically, he takes it upon himself to submit her for that music program that she's interested in in LA. And again, the best part of this scene is the background music. <laughs> I feel like it's good music for when you're up to no good. So guys, remember those concert tickets that Hillary bought from that awkward guy, Matthew? I got the concert tickets that you want. Well, those were Paul's graduation gifts. They're tickets to a three days grace concert. Remember them? That was actually a good song. But the only way they can go to the concert is if they sneak, because Paul's grounded, remember, for like almost igniting his dad. <laughs> so they sneak out and Aunt Nina sees it happen while she's straddling the railing on the balcony. 
That seems safe. She's like, oh, <laughs> you crazy kids. I remember when I used Disney. Whoa! So they're driving along, sibling bonding. Tara, you got the best voice I've ever heard. Correction, Paul. She has the best voices you've ever heard. Well, who knows when we'll ever break the law again, right? I don't really see how this is breaking the law, unless you count Paul's haircut. <laughs> Because that's a crime. Um. So they get to the Three Days Grace concert. It's a weirdly small, awkward <laughs> venue. And Terry ends up getting hoisted up by her brother and the stranger. And oh my god, she gets to touch hands with the guy from Three Days Grace. What kind of venue is this? Because there's not even any security guys like standing in front of the stage facing the audience to make sure nothing weird happens. I want to go to a concert there. So they're heading home. They're high on life. There's more sibling bonding happening. <laughs> When suddenly, in an incredibly predictable turn of events, they get into a car accident. Oh, no, not a car accident. Paul's bowl cut like moves in slow motion. Now, hear me out guys, okay? I'm not making fun of car accidents. I hate that I have to disclaim that, but I do. I've been in a car accident. They're horrible, okay? But can I please make fun of how this one was edited? Will you just... Will you let me? Because right after the collision, like immediately after impact, they finish the Three Days Grace song. <laughs> like shouldn't the music have stopped? Or maybe switched to sad music or literally anything else? I wanna know what the conversation was with like the writing and editing team when they came up with this idea. All right, next up is a horrific car crash. Um. I mean, we, we have to keep the end of the song in there. Three Days of Grace has to have its moment. I don't know, guys. And you know, I'm also confused about how the car crash even occurred. Because right before the collision, it shows Paul making a left-hand turn. There's a median there, which means if a truck hit the driver's side, he would have had to have been driving the wrong direction on the road. Anyone else? Am I crazy? You know what? Let's Google it. I'm totally right. Not one person on the editing team caught that. Okay. And this is why you just can't let this movie make you sad, okay? Just focus on all the mistakes. <laughs> These highlighters are out of this world. Where was I? So Terry wakes up in the hopsicle. And it was kind of funny, okay, because she doesn't make a peep when she wakes up, but her mom just senses it. Oh. So convincing. Anyway, she sees that Terry is alive and she's like, oh, thank God. Terry finds out Paul didn't make it. Again, it's supposed to be sad, but it's not because it's so terrible. <laughs> and then we get this weird cameo from the director, Sean McNamara. He plays the doctor that examines Terry. I guess it's not that weird. I, I just always wonder what the story is behind a director putting himself into his movie. I'm just curious, like, does it happen because you can't find anybody to do the part how you want it to be done? Clue me in, guys. Anyway, the doctor asks Hillary some questions, but the dad just, he doesn't understand how the whole thing works. Can you tell me your birthday? April 20th. Dad, you can't give her the answers, okay? That's cheating. Well, the doctor shines this light in her eyes and it gives her a flashback to the accident. She gets like a little PTSD from seeing the light. And just take note of it, okay? Because it's significant. It's gonna happen again. And again and then the dad like tackles the doctor so then we get our first little montage it's weird I'm not gonna lie this is supposed to be a montage of them like mourning the loss of Paul but we're not sad right because it's weird it's four clips that was all they could give us of their grief it's like grave church dinner coffee fake chewing fake cutting <laughs> can we say that again <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. And again, I don't like want to harp on this too much. I just feel a little uncomfortable making fun of a movie that has a tragedy in it. But it's obviously not the tragedy that's funny. It's just like the editing and acting. Like this scene where Terry and her mom are in Terry's room, you know, crying. They go to like give each other a hug and someone <laughs> snorts. <laughs> was weird. Why didn't the sound people edit it? So then Terry ends up getting a letter from Bristol Hillman, I think it was called. And wouldn't you know it, she got in. So if you're not following, she applied herself, like knowingly, and then her brother submitted the DVD as like an extra means of getting her in. But she doesn't know about the DVD. She just knows she applied. She got in, 
How could she not? <laughs> so Aunt Nina and Terry's mom come up with this plan to bamboozle the dad so that Terry can go live her best and do this music program. So they tell him that Terry is gonna be staying at Aunt Nina's throughout the whole month of August and for some reason he buys that. I thought it was weird because doesn't school start in August? Is that not a thing everywhere? <laughs> and I kind of just couldn't believe that the mom was in on this massive lie that they're telling the husband right after they just lost a son. Taking her to the train station and uh, Nina will pick her up on the other end. Solid choice for your marriage, mom. But hey, without this lie, we wouldn't have this movie. And without this movie, life would lose its meaning. So the dad agrees to let Terry go. And even though he's letting Terry go, you can tell he's just still not a fan. He's not happy. He has a permanent frown on his face and a permanent toothpick in his mouth. He's got a perma pick. So Terry heads to LA, she hops on a bus, and before we get there, we're gonna take a short break. But don't go anywhere, because we haven't even scratched the surface of cheese just yet. See you there. Hey kids, we're back. I've been trying to use Anastasia Brow Freeze, but it's so intense that I don't know how it's gonna go today. Just bear with me. All right guys, so Terry arrives in LA. She finds her building. She can't get in, it's locked. But thankfully this Rufio looking guy, Jay, shows up and lets her in. Oh. <laughs> my god. By the way, I don't remember why I did this, but when I was watching the movie earlier, I had pulled the movie down into my editing software and I raised the exposure for this scene like big time. And look what I found. It's the boom mic. Isn't that neat? <laughs> Makes you wonder what other secrets could be revealed just by raising the exposure of a movie, right? And then I also saw that you can see Jay's reflection in the window before she ever meets him, so. Raise the exposure, kids. It's full of secrets. So anywho, Terry goes up to the rooftop to get service on her cell phone. <laughs> Remember those days? She goes up to the rooftop to call her Aunt Nina, who's busy welding a sculpture, so that they can three-way call her dad, three-way calling. Remember those days? <laughs> Wait, I just said that. And I kind of thought this phone call was weird. I thought it was odd that the first thing Terry says to her aunt was that her cab driver was a total jerk. And the cab driver was a total jerk. I get it, I get it, I get it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, if you think that cab driver was a jerk, I would truly hate to see how you feel about an actual jerk. I think you're a little spoiled, Terry. Anyway, like I said, they three-way call the dad, you know, to convince him that Terry is at Nina's house, but they can't keep their lies straight. Oh, we're just eating television. dinner. What? Um, we're watching eating television. Dinner? Okay, first of all, what teenage girl says the word television? We're watching Eating television! Dinner? It's called a TV. I want to talk to whoever wrote this because they end up saying the word television like five times in this scene. Television. 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 It's weird. It's weird to me. Okay, these eyebrows are like... This stuff is insane. So the next morning is their orientation and they walk into the auditorium and who is there to greet them but Uncle Phil. Okay, everyone, take a seat. Uncle Phil, you're better than this movie. We get our first look at some of the staff and other students. This teacher's super edgy and he's not like other teachers. He's got a studded bracelet. else do we got here in the audience? Oh, Kat Dennings? Uh, yeah, that's right. Everyone's favorite luscious-lipped comedy queen is in this movie. Hi, I'm gonna be your waitress because my mother drank. <laughs> and honestly, she is gonna save this movie for us, guys. Okay, so just wait. <laughs> hey, is that good Charlotte? <laughs> And also the edgy teacher is the guy from my big fat Greek wedding. This is just an all-star cast suddenly. What a neat time. So his character's name is Mr. Torball. He's the choir teacher amongst other things. And on the first day he informs them that in the six weeks that the students are there, they're going to learn an incredibly complex choral arrangement and that it's not gonna happen. An incredibly complex choral piece. It ain't ever gonna happen. <laughs> Good to know. He also tells them that only five people will perform solos. There are five solos in the ensemble. Only five people will perform solos in front of this class. Wonder who's gonna get it. So later that day, the musical kids are all being musical, you know, playing their instruments outside of the school. <laughs> I blame Uncle Phil. I look like Little Richard, attorney at law. And they all just kind of bust out into this impromptu song. Hey, Jay, nice hook. Jump in and pick it up. For some reason, I don't like this song. It makes me uncomfortable. Uh, uh, uh. 
Thankfully, it gets interrupted by Kat Dennings, who again, I love, and I love the look on her face because it makes me feel like she is as cynical as I am about this. We don't get to find out though, because as soon as Terry sits down next to her, she kind of gets up and walks off. She is a touch antisocial, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Not everybody's an extrovert. She walks off and I couldn't help but just kind of feel bad for Terry's character here because I just know this feeling of like being the new girl at a school or at a job and you haven't done anything wrong to anybody, but everyone's kind of snubbing you. <sighs> it's the worst. So anyway, during this song, her and Jay kind of make eyes at each other and his little girlfriend or ex-girlfriend Robin, you know, with the curly hair, she's not feeling it. And also, I just thought you guys might like to see this girl hanging out of the window playing a trumpet. Wait, isn't that a trumpet? I don't know anything. So Hillary ends up tripping over this guy who really needs to learn how to stand. I should really learn to stand. This is not the first time that she's tripped in a movie that we've done on this series. And again, with a female protagonist tripping over something. <gasps> I don't get it. I get it, but I don't. Anyway, so this guy's name is Kiwi and he's got it bad for Kat Dennings. I wonder where that's gonna go. So then there's this little exchange between Terry and her roommate, Denise. Denise has been kind of cold and standoffish to her thus far in the movie, as has everyone else. And finally in this scene, Terry's like, you know what, what give? It seems really personal. Oh, please. And you find out that Denise, she's not, it's nothing personal against Terry. She just, she's very focused. She really wants to win the scholarship that they're offering at the end of the year to one lucky student. I'm here for that scholarship. I'm just about hardcore focused. And you know, in my notes, it doesn't feel like the right time to introduce Denise, but if I don't introduce Denise now, I fear it will be too late. Her character will develop too much. The next day at choir practice, Terry hits a sour note. Hallelujah. Ouch. Sorry, that was me. And Mr. Tonebar is like, hey, Terry, I recognize you from that DVD. But she doesn't know about the DVD, remember? We meet another one of her teachers. I don't remember his name, but he's super mean. The it's your time that was wasted. He doesn't like how she sings support i <laughs> Can you blame him? I don't get it. If Hillary Dove's voice was not a good fit for this character, why not cast someone else. Anyway, this teacher like calls her fat or something. He's okay to look fat. Point of all this being to show that she comes to the school, not the greatest singer, but that she's going to leave as a powerhouse vocalist. So the next day, Terry makes her way over to the only person so far in the movie that has been nice to her, Kiwi, who still has a crush on Kat Dennings, who still has not spoken yet 41 minutes into this movie. He really, really wants to impress her with his spoon drumming, but she's just not feeling it. <gasps> oh my God, wait, is he drinking a Sobe? I haven't had a Sobe in literally 20 years. <sighs> the nostalgia. Hey, you go back home. No, 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 you go back home. Wait, also, is that another Rufio wannabe back there? <laughs> bang a -ring. Let's take another short break, guys, while I do these eyelashes. I'll see you back at the fountain. Hey, we're back. And I actually didn't finish doing my eyelashes, so. You get to watch. So one day, Jay and Terry are taking a little stroll around LA. They stop at a fountain. Wouldn't you know it, Karen's there. Yeah, Karen and her friend, Debbie. And I see in my notes here that I wrote, why does Terry's shirt say candy hose? What is that? But I can't put that joke in here because I'm pretty sure Nick DiRamio brought that out in his review of this movie. And he's a lot funnier than me, so. So Terry kind of starts to open up to Jay about her brother and the car accident. And his response is basically like, you know what, I've got a gun. <laughs> Me and my puka shells and my frosted tips, we've got to go. <laughs> but that's okay because Terry ends up running into her roommate, Denise, who is suddenly nice now. And Denise takes Hillary to this train station where she likes to practice her violin and I'm not gonna lie, it slaps. <laughs> or at least I think it slaps, but this guy in the background, he doesn't agree. <laughs> so back at school, Terry sucks again. <laughs> oh. 
him. And Mr. Tonebar is like, what the heck? What happened to the girl from the DVD? And Terry's like, look, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know about any DVD. So Mr. Tonebar pulls her aside and shows her the DVD that her brother made her. And I'm not gonna lie, it was a real tearjerker. Terry deserves a chance to learn from the best. She's already good. But she could be great. Hilary Duff worked up some real tears in this scene. Actually, she works them up a couple times in this movie. She's pretty talented with the crying scenes, you know? So instead of her brother's video inspiring her, it just upsets her, it just makes her wanna leave. But Jay comes in, he's like, no, come on, you're not leaving. Takes her on a walk on the beach, it's very romantic. They end up hitting it off, he's like, I like you. I like you. And she's like, but you're dating that Robin girl. And he's all like, some people hang on. And they should just like have Really, Terry? <laughs> That sentence is what does it for you. All right, guys, here we go. Where's my lip liner? We're coming up on the best scene ever. The one I saw on TikTok slash Twitter that made me want to review this movie. All right, so back at Mr. Tonebar's class, he's making the kids do this incredibly weird <laughs> vocal exercise. And there is some hard notes to hit in this little ditty, okay? They're struggling. La, 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 la. You know, I feel bad for her. If only she had two voices, then maybe she would do as good as Terry did. Do you want to see that again? <laughs> you know what? If you've never seen that before, you're welcome. My favorite part is, my favorite part, my favorite part of this is just, oops, just before she goes off and kind of makes the exercise her own, she like thinks about it first. <laughs> okay, I don't even know if I'm on pitch because I don't feel like pushing play. So anywho, after doing this spectacular run, everyone in the class is amazed. Even the teacher's like, you know what? You get the solo. Curly girl Robin like thinks he was talking to her. Awesome. I was talking to Terry. <laughs> okay, first of all, how embarrassing. Second of all, why would you think he was talking to you? Did you just do this? Hey. <laughs> didn't think so. You guys look, as much as I'm making fun of this scene, this little vocal exercise sounds pretty difficult. I don't even know if I could do it. this whole scene stew in your hearts and minds and we're gonna take one more break and when we come back we're in the home stretch we're back and the humidity here in Missouri is making my hair look really frizzy all right so after Terry kills it with the vocal exercise she finally gets a little pep in her step she gets some confidence you know she's feeling herself she even does better with the mean teacher guy <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was actually her voice, so we're making progress here. And then she walks into the auditorium and finds Jay working on an original piece. His lyrics are really next level. You and me, can't you see? You and me, can't you see? Seriously. We can do better than that, Jay. Well guys, in case you've forgotten, Terry is an incredible songwriter. And because Jay's lyrics suck so bad, she sits down and decides to help him. But in your hair, makes my heart jump in the air. So the next day rolls around and we get to see Kiwi again, who is still obsessed with Kat Denning's character, who still has not spoken 
Now 57 minutes into this movie. All I want is for Kat to save this movie for us. Any minute now. So because she can see the Kiwi is so in love with this girl, she decides to play matchmaker between Kat and Kiwi. <laughs> Kiwi's a weird name. Kiwi's a weird name. Um, excuse me, I just said that. So Terry pops in on Kat Dennings. While she's practicing ah. the piano, you find out her name is Sloane. Sloane? And Terry's like, all right, Sloane, nice to meet you. I'm Terry, my friend has a crush on you, and I want you to go on a double date with us. And Sloane says yes, she agrees, but you can tell she's kind of annoyed. And while I would normally relate to Sloane in most situations, in this particular scene, I kind of related to Terry because I would totally be that annoying person that wanted to introduce myself to Kat Dennings. <laughs> Look, I know you're doing something right now. Um, you're clearly busy, but I just thought it would be fun to like come in, interrupt you, introduce myself a little bit, you know, that sort of thing. So my name's Jamie. What's your name? Sloan. Ooh, Sloan. I like that. Sloan. <laughs> Very exotic. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, this is my bird. Um, his name's Kiwi. And I just, I wanted to show him to you because- Kiwi's a weird name. <sighs> well, excuse me, but you might want to watch how you talk to him because he has a big crush on you. Why would he have a crush on me? That's stupid. Okay, you know what? I thought this was going to be like a fun conversation thing between the three of us, but you're just kind of being mean like to me and my bird, so. Me and Kiwi are out of here. I guess there's not much hope for me. So the next night, it's time for the double date. Kiwi's nervous. He's boingin'. <laughs> He's a real boing boing boy. Sloan shows up ready for the Renaissance Fair. Damn it. And uh, for their date, they go to a fountain where Denise is playing. And Terry, with her newfound confidence, walks up and gives her some sheet music. And she's like, yo, Denise, play this. <laughs> My ears don't like it. This scene gets so cute, you guys. Everybody's just laughing and smiling and bonding. Sloane even joins in. Even a mime with sparkler shows up. Oh, God bless us all. I've never experienced this before, so therefore I make fun of it. Cut over to the rooftop. <laughs> Gotta have a couple rooftop scenes because it's a tween movie. Wish I had a place to think like this. So you wish you had a building? It's a public building. You guys can share. Anyway, they almost kiss, okay, but Terry is not ready. But then, 48 seconds later, yes, I counted. She is ready, yay. They kiss and they're together now. They are now Jay and Terry, better known as Jerry. Robin is very upset. She's just not winning at life at all in this movie. Jerry starts working on their song that they started together. It's a really fun scene because you can see the massive shadow of the camera equipment like looming over them as they're writing their song. <sighs> Steve. Well, then one night they all decide to go to open mic night. And what would an open mic night scene in a movie be without a guy who was terrible? <laughs> you know who he reminds me of actually is um, the guy from Puddle of Mud when he covered that Nirvana song at the radio station. Easy frail, have a clue, it's wrong. In your life, have a time. they had cast him. So Jay has the bright idea that he and Terry should do their song they've been working on for this open mic night. So they get up on stage and you guessed it, she chokes. There's a light in me, there's a light in me, there's a light in me. Hey Terry, is there a light in you at all? Cause it's unclear. Anyway, a light shines in her eyes and she gets that PTSD flashback to the car accident and she has to run off stage, which is just a little bit ironic considering the lyrics of the song. So the next day is when we get our serious love triangle conflict. Robin is just having a bad day. She throws a full-blown tantrum in Mr. Tombar's class. He runs out, she starts banging on a vending machine. Don't take your anger out on the coke. Jay walks up and he's kind of trying to comfort her a little bit and she's like, hey, can we talk in private? Gee, I wonder what's gonna happen. The walls will 
Cumble. So Jay agrees. He goes to talk to her in the practice room and she's like weirdly playing the piano while she's trying to seduce him. But I thought you liked bad. Maybe a little bad. Awkward. Long story short, she ends up kissing Jay. Terry, of course, walks in at the exact moment that she and Jay are kissing and she runs off again. <laughs> Terry, wait! She runs off a lot in this movie. Jay chases after her. She straight up like shoves him down onto the concrete, which I thought was a bit intense. She's packing her stuff again. She's ripping up the lyrics to their song. Like this is very emotional. And it leads us into yet another emotional montage where Terry is just, she's really contemplating life. She's looking off into the distance on the beach. Her and Jay are both like trying to finish their songs separately, but they need each other. <laughs> We've seen that before, by the way, in Glitter. Don't think I haven't forgotten. I won't let time so Mr. Tombar wants to kind of comfort Terry. He can see that she's down in the dumps and he actually makes a pretty good point about artists. Well, you're an artist and artists feel things differently than regular people. Artists convey emotion. They make a audience feel what they're feeling. And this is just a random side note, but it, he, I, he's right. I've never thought of it that way. Anyway, Jay shows up to Terry's dorm room that night, drunk as a skunk. You have to leave now, okay? He's trying to get her back, but he's all sloppy and annoying. And Terry's like, why would you do that? Why would you drink? Why would you do that? Why would you drink? Because, because I'm, I'm worthless. You know what, don't even try. Wait, so. Anyone who drinks is worthless? <laughs> what kind of message is that? I guess I'll get rid of all my friends. <laughs> I'm worthless. You know what, don't- I love Denise's response to this because it was exactly the same as my response when watching this scene. We're kindred spirits. So they decided they need to take him up to the rooftop. <laughs> I love this room. That's what I would do if my cheating boyfriend showed up to my dorm room drunk as a skunk. Call a cab? No. Nah. Put him on your floor for the night? No. The only choice is to go to the rooftop. He at least seems excited about it. <laughs> Ooh, his breath is I got excited right here because I heard Hilary Duff's song playing. In a moment, everything can change. Wait a minute. They spent the night on the roof? <laughs> was it just so that 11 year olds watching this would think that this was edgy? <laughs> well guys, another conflict's coming up, okay? Because back at Terry's crib, her dad finds an invitation to the recital thing. So the cat's out of the bag, okay? He and his toothpick, they know what's going on. And I have to say, I'm still confused at how he didn't know what was happening because earlier in the movie, we heard Denise talk about the tuition and how her and her mom could barely scrape it together. We still had crazy trouble scraping up the tuition. So I'm assuming this tuition is pretty high. It's in LA. It's very prestigious. If you go under the assumption that the mom paid for this, how did the dad not know that that money was missing? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Jerry, they're back to working on their song together. So I guess Jay is forgiven. That drunken rooftop sleepover, it just, it healed all of Terry's wounds. I really, really like their song lyrics. They're very deep. It doesn't matter, 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 it doesn't matter. Hey, Terry, does it matter at all? I can't tell. <laughs> Should I stop doing that joke? I just like it. So guys, everybody is practicing for their big final performance. Who's gonna win the scholarship? Kiwi's drumming on everything. Sloane's pianoing. Sloane is sick and tired of Kiwi drumming on everything and like interrupting her practice. So she goes to scream at him. And by scream, I mean, get lured into this very chaotic makeout sesh. <laughs> are breaking stuff. <laughs> Relax. Okay, and it's finally time for the final performances, okay? Thank God. <laughs> Going out of my mind here. <laughs> Robin's up first. She's in like a rock band, but like in a prom dress. <laughs> Kiwi's performance is really good. Doesn't even know! Denise obviously kills it, seals the show with her violin. Things are going well. Until Terry realizes as she's backstage that she forgot the necklace that was her brother's. It's like that Celtic cross necklace that she's wearing throughout the movie. So she has to run back to her room and who's waiting there but her dad. Her toothpick munching, anti-fun, non-supportive, permanent frowning dad. Francis! He tells her to pack her things. 
for a third time. Pack your things, Terry. And he's like, look, we're going home. Go home. Daddy, no! Uh-oh, conflict. And Terry's like, no, Dad, I'm not going home, okay? Because I'm really good. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I love you, Hillary. So her dad gives in and she makes it back to the stage in time to perform her song with Jay. She gets up there and she sees the spotlight and you think she's gonna choke, right? Because she has those like flashbacks, but she doesn't. She actually ends up kind of seeing her brother like in her mind's eye. It turns out it's just like the lighting guy, but it gives her the courage to finish her performance. God, this movie is so dumb. I'm not even like crying. There's just <laughs> something in my eye. Anyway, Terry and Jay, they just kill it. Every Every single person in the audience is nodding. <laughs> Besides Aunt Nina. 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 Show a little more enthusiasm, okay? You set this all up. I also like how Mr. Tone Bar and the mean teacher like high five each other. They're like, yeah. We did a good job getting her vocals on fleek. So then Uncle Phil and the rest of the staff deliberate, and by deliberate, I mean talk about it in the audience for two seconds. <laughs> Denise wins the scholarship. She wins, wait, how much is it? Each year we present a $10,000 academic scholarship. Oh, it's 10 grand? What's that gonna pay for? Parking? I'm just kidding. Well guys, even though Terry didn't win the scholarship, she learned a valuable lesson in the process and she learned about herself. So really, it's just a win, win, win. Everybody's happy, everybody's on board, kinda like the end of the Lizzie McGuire movie, where she did something wrong but then sang on stage, so her entire family decided to overlook her transgression. Unique. <laughs> they have another impromptu jam sesh, this time featuring Terry's song from the beginning of the movie that I guess everyone in the school learned. <laughs> Terry's feeling it. She's like, shoulder, 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 y'all. I have one question though. Why is Sloane just standing there instead of, you know, angrily playing the piano? It would have made it better. So guys, that's it. As usual, it was pretty rough. I actually did not have a hard time getting through this movie. I was thoroughly entertained, especially by this part. Hey, yeah, yeah. And now it lives rent free in my brain. So the budget for this film is estimated at 15 million doll hairs. Opening weekend in the USA, it grossed 4.6 million. The total worldwide gross of 10,411,980 doll hairs. The reviews are pretty polarizing. There was people that hate it, like this IMDB user who said this movie was craptacular. He says, I feel bad for Hilary Duff, but I suppose this is her own fault. There are scenes in the movie that, out of the serious context, would have made for a great parody of teen movies. There are times when Hilary Duff is asked to sing scales and her voice is replaced with a professional's. <laughs> We know. But then there's good reviews too, like this one, entitled, Raise Your Voice! <laughs> Couldn't think of a different title for your review of Raise Your Voice? You titled it Raise Your Voice. Raise Your Voice is by far the best movie I've seen all year. Hilary Duff is amazing, and I think this is the best yet of all the movies she's been in. I've watched the movie at the theater five times. Okay, well, you know, I'm happy for those people who liked it. You know what I think? I think this movie had great potential and could have had amazing musical numbers, but instead we got this. You gotta smile so bright. So I don't know, guys. What do you think? Did you feel sad watching it? Did you feel like it was a tragedy? Or do you just think it's a tragedy that it was created? <laughs> well, that's it for me, guys. It is 10, 15 p.m. I need to go to bed and get a life. So I appreciate you being here. And as always, leave your suggestions down below for the next mock up on Mava. Love y'all. See you next time. Bye. Since you've been gone, I can do it I'm not a good dancer. Is it break time? Nope, it's not break time. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. So gunky. But I'm not gonna be the main character in the role of a dance movie. Uh, but that's okay because, uh, but that's okay because Terry and, uh, beca uh, but that's okay. <laughs> One more mile to Jericho.